At approximately 10 p.m. on the 27th of July 1987, West German students Klaus Schelkler, Bettina Taxis, and Thomas Schmidt stepped onto the deck of Viking Sally. Viking Sally was built between 1979 and 1980 in a German shipyard located in Papenburg. She was an eight-story ship with a 2,000-passenger capacity and space for over 400 cars. The ship's route was taking the trio from Stockholm to Turku, Finland, and was set to arrive at their destination at 8am the following morning. Sadly, two of the trio would never reach Finland, and the horror that befell them continues to haunt police to this day. Klaus Hermann Schelkler was born on the 28th of January 1967, and Bettina Taxis was born on the 10th of May 1965. The pair became acquainted in the early winter of 1987 and soon started dating. They had reportedly even started planning a future together. Automotive technology student Klaus and Bettina were hard-working individuals and had saved money during the spring and summer in order to go on a trip. Once they had gathered enough funds, they planned their journey to the Nordic countries, with Klaus intending on bringing his friend Thomas Schmidt. They departed from Stuttgart on the 23rd of July, heading north with the plan being that they were going to complete their tour in Nordkap, the North Cape in Norway, before returning home to Germany. The three companions had by this point travelled through Denmark towards Sweden, where they stayed in Stockholm for a couple of days. Originally, the plan was to go to northern Sweden, however, they changed their plans and wished to take a cruise across the Gulf of Bothnia and travel through Finland. Phone calls home and postcards to their loved ones suggested that up until their departure from Sweden, all was well and they were thoroughly enjoying the experience. Leaving port, Viking Sally was bustling with passengers making their way to their cabins, bars, restaurants and shops. Klaus, Bettina and Thomas familiarised themselves with the ship and made a few quick purchases at one of the shops before finding a place to rest. Klaus and Bettina desired to watch the sunrise in the morning, and including the fact they couldn't afford a cabin to sleep in, they therefore made the decision to sleep out on the helicopter platform. Thomas, on the other hand, who had lamented about the cold weather and noise, found a place to settle down beside a friendly Finnish man, one floor beneath his friends. The couple were witnessed by three young men on the top deck who were at the time enjoying beer. Before cozying themselves up in their sleeping bags, Bettina and Klaus took a night stroll around the top deck, where they engaged in conversation with a man named Tauno, who was fluent in their native language of German. Tauno and Klaus instantly connected through their love for cars and planned to have a look at parts stored in Tauno's vehicle. However, they discovered that the car deck was locked. Therefore, they arranged to meet up again in the morning. The two men gave each other their contact details and Bettina, who was also enjoying Tauno's company, apparently gave him a nickname, the Fun Finn. The couple returned to the helicopter deck shortly after 1am, snuggling up beneath the stars. The ship then fell into a quiet lull, the last businesses due to close at 4am. At a quarter to four, just before closing time, three Danish youths wandered the helicopter platform, keen to have a view of Aristo, a large ocean area in the archipelago sea. The Danes told authorities that the deck was otherwise empty when they arrived, but they witnessed two passengers near air vents who appeared to be intoxicated, as the strangers struggled to steady themselves by leaning on a wall. One of the Danish men, who was a patrol boy on the ship, approached and offered to help the man and woman whose faces were covered with blood. 
Two of the men kept them company as the third bolted across deck to seek help. A security officer arrived on the scene almost immediately and found that the young woman and man had both suffered blunt force trauma to their skulls and were clinging on to life. The victims were Klaus Schelkle and Bettina Taxis. The couple attempted to speak but were physically unable to. Crew members aided the pair in going to the cabin of the ship's nurse, who, after realising the severity of the injuries, performed emergency first aid. Raising the alarm, a rescue helicopter was called and took 20-year-old Klaus and 22-year-old Bettina to hospital, arriving at 5.48am. Sadly, Klaus succumbed to his injuries upon arrival to the hospital and Bettina was described as being in a critical condition. She endured a long operation and was unconscious for several weeks before being transferred to a hospital in her home country. The helicopter which had been used to transport Klaus and Bettina from Viking Sally to hospital was also used to fly detectives to the ship to begin their investigations. The detectives arrived on board at 6.30am and examined the crime scene on the upper deck. The ship's security officer, who was first to arrive at the scene just a few hours earlier, had partially secured the crime scene and possessed valuable information regarding the incident. For example, he saw the victims beside their sleeping bags under a table, which was tucked in a corner of the deck, partially covered by a glass wall. Viking Sally docked at 8.10am in Turku with a strong police presence waiting on land. Once arriving, the passengers were forced to wait until they could disembark. A suspect had not yet been identified, therefore Finnish police planned on limiting passengers to leaving through a single exit. Police boats were on patrol around the ship, keeping watch in case anything was thrown overboard. As well as taking photographs, three video cameras were used to film each individual leaving the ship. One camera focused on all passengers, the second was for filming young men, and the third was for filming any people who were acting suspiciously. This was particularly uncomfortable for a Norwegian couple who were said to have been acting oddly, but were later found to have been lovers travelling in secret. Another method involved every person filling out forms detailing their personal information. However, the idea was quickly abandoned as the area became overcrowded. Exceptions to the rule were families with young children, the elderly and several others who were considered by police as being innocent. Once most of the passengers had left, those who were unable to confirm their identities were escorted into separate rooms where they had to wait until they could verify their identity. It is worth noting that all passengers listed on the ship's manifest were accounted for. Police interviewed approximately 20 people of interest. Among them were the Danish men and Thomas Schmidt, but they were released after authorities believed they had no part in the attacks. An English passenger named Patrick Haley had been found sleeping smeared in blood. He explained that he'd suffered a severe nosebleed from wild celebrations that night, and further tests concluded that all of the blood found on his clothes belonged to him. Despite their efforts and intense pressure from the media and public, Finnish authorities were unable to find the perpetrator of such a despicable crime. Because of the unique circumstances, a more thorough search of the ship could not be conducted, and an investigation of Viking Sally's decks would have taken about a week, much to the inconvenience of the passengers. 1,400 passengers and crew of approximately nine different nationalities were on board at the time, and with that many leaving the ship, it was impossible to speak with every single one as they continued on their travels. 250 samples were collected by forensic investigators and were sent for examination at the National Bureau of Investigation in what was described as Finland's biggest forensic operation. However, nothing of significance was found. Because the incident took place at sea, it was a difficult task to assign an investigative team. 
The local police were not able to carry out such a task due to lack of resources. Therefore, other authorities had to get involved, which in itself was a difficult situation to handle. The case was thoroughly studied, however, with the passing of time, no answers have been found about who murdered Klaus Schelkle and attempted to murder Bettina Taxis, as well as the reasoning behind such a brutal attack. It was concluded that the motive was not financial or sexual. Perhaps jealousy was involved. Maybe the couple said something to another passenger which threw them into a fit of rage. Or maybe the crime was committed by someone with mental health issues. The victims were more than likely drugged and the murder weapon hasn't been revealed but it was known that there was a fire axe on board. Reportedly, police were looking for an English-speaking, slender young man between the ages of 20 and 35, wearing a monochrome, green or dark-coloured beanie hat rolled up at the edges. They did find a German passenger with a similar hat, however he had a solid alibi. Two fishermen reportedly retrieved clothing on the northern shore of Lila Bjornholm Island in August of 1987. Within a black bag were Finnish made Umberto Lufer shoes with a hidden heel noted as size 41, light shorts made by an unidentified manufacturer which had a prime zip and two front pockets, a Finnish made red woolen jumper of an acrylic material, and a pair of work gloves with the initials HK. It is believed that these items belonged to a passenger on board Viking Sally in late July of 1987. Over the decades, three different people have confessed to the crime, however no conviction has ever been brought. Police are trying to trace persons of interest to this day, however so far their efforts have been unsuccessful. There is the possibility that whoever was responsible could have jumped overboard following the crime, but there is no evidence to support this. Finnish police have been praised by locals for their dedication to seeking the truth, and they strongly believe that they will solve the crime. Bettina Taxis survived her injuries and suffered permanent damage to her eye and hand. She gave a statement to police about the incident in June 1988, but it has not been made public. A retired police inspector said in an interview that Bettina refused to cooperate with authorities and allegedly she didn't clarify the timeline of events or a description of the attacker. Bettina had muttered something in the emergency room in German, however there were no German-speaking staff available to translate. With no other witnesses to the crime and the frustrating fact that security cameras on the ship were broken, it has been near on impossible to find a break in the case. This actually wasn't the first time murder had occurred on Viking Sally. A year previously, in July of 1986, a businessman was killed, his death going unnoticed until the ship arrived at port. Authorities captured his killer and remain in the hunt to find the person who took Klaus Schelkler's life. Viking Sally was renamed MS Estonia in 1993 and sank in the Baltic Sea on the 28th of September 1994 in one of the worst maritime disasters of the 20th century where 852 people were lost, the second highest fatality rate of a European ship disaster after the RMS Titanic. Police keep in regular contact with Thomas Schmidt and Bettina Taxis, along with several others on board Viking Sally that fateful night. Hope has not been lost. In July 2019, an update was made indicating that the case is on the verge of being solved, as police made a major breakthrough in the case. They believe they have an idea of who was responsible and are continuing to carry out their investigations. They believe the killer was a man who would, in 2019, be over the age of 45, capping the age at 90, however this is, unfortunately, a very broad estimate. 
They also ruled out the fire axe as the murder weapon as the injuries were not consistent with that kind of tool. The murder weapon was possibly thrown overboard. Further details have not been made public, however police are allegedly taking action on an individual but they don't wish for any information to be leaked to the press that could potentially jeopardise the investigation. It is believed that if Finnish police have found the guilty party, the case will soon go to trial and justice may be found for Klaus Schelkle. However, at the moment it is a waiting game and only time will tell. Thank you.